below CK. This is Butcher Slasher P right here, and I'm going to show you quick how to uh, chop up a bottom round flat. Sorry for the camera angle, it's the best I can do right now. First, take it out of this crappy packaging because uh, we don't have hanging sides or quarters anymore. See how ugly this piece is? You're going to want to clean that up a bit here. So you're going to take your knife, you're going to slide it along this top section, take off as much of the junk as you can without getting too deep into the meat. Like right here, this is going to be good for some cubes or some tips a little bit later, but for now we're just going to throw that to the side. I usually take short articulate motions with it instead of taking a longer motion, which many butchers do. So it takes me just a little bit longer to cut, but it's much more accurate than using long strikes when you're learning how to cut a piece. So I'll turn it your way so you can see what this end looks like. This is the rump side. You can tell that because it looks a little bit like a fist on the end there. So that'll let you know the difference between the bottom round, which is a little bit more flat and sloping off, and the rump. It's going to have a little bit of tissue on top here that you're going to want to keep an eye out for while you're cutting. Because it doesn't taste very good when you leave it in there. It's just real thin stuff like that. On this side, you're going to run into some silver, which is really junky for just about any application. So you usually sneak behind it here. Pull your knife up a little bit if you have to. Then you remove this section and get rid of it. It's good for some beef if you want to use it for grinds. Aside from that, it's not good for much of anything. What the hell is the number for bones? You're going to work your way around here. And you're going to trim off the back. You're going to trim off this edge here. work your way along this side as well quick. Trim off the little bit of junk on the top. The rump side is kind of fatty as you can see over here. So you kind of have to just let it ride. If you want to, you can trim a little deeper and you can save a little bit of this for grinds and whatnot. But I usually leave it as it is because that's weight and it's also good for a roast. Make sure you just trim off a little bit of excess on this edge here. And then you figure about, about how much weight you're going to want to have for that roast. How much? I'm going to trim just a little bit more out of here because it doesn't look too good. And this is an Angus cut, so kind of want it to look nice when you put it in the case. Then you're going to take it, figure out about how big you want your roast. Make a relatively decent sized one here. And you're going to look on this side. See all this extra fat? That's not a bad thing to have, but since it is the Angus and you want it to look a little premium, you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut that little triangle out just so it looks a little bit nicer from the outside view there. On this side, you're going to just trim this edge off. So once again, it looks a little bit nicer from the appearance. Now you may notice this little bit of blue dye here, that's actually marking and grading from the companies that grade them. So it's actually completely edible and it's safe to eat. It doesn't look the best, but it's not all bad. And just trim this edge here. Got a nice quick bottom round. The edge one always looks the worst, so you work your way in just a little bit from there. And we'll cut this part off. And you'll have your next one. It's got nice marbling throughout, a little bit of fat again. So we're going to use that same trick right here. Just trim that little portion out so it looks a little bit nicer from the outer view. Go over the sides again just to make sure you're not missing anything so people don't dislike it. Now something else you can see is the difference in coloration between like this face and this right here. This color is, hasn't shown bloom yet. So the red is with bloom, this is without bloom. 
this is going to be a nice rump on this end. I'm going to cut it about here so it's adequate size but not too large so it's easy for customers to pick out and purchase. Since the edge is a little nasty, we're just going to prune it a little bit. It's actually a pretty bad end to be honest. So we're going to prune back just a little bit more. And then we're going to flip it and take a little bit more of this cab off. You want to leave some fat because without fat, the rump wrist is terrible. So we're going to take this little bit more off right here. We're going to call that a rump wrist. Like I said earlier, you can take this little portion off if you'd like, but I recommend against it. Now, if you're running low on rumps, I don't like to do this, but there are guys in the business that do. See this little bit of silver in here that runs throughout? You can actually take your knife through there, follow that seam, cut this portion off here, and then you can essentially call this a second rump or an early cut rump as some would call it. I don't agree with it. I'm only doing this here to show you what it would look like. Actually needs to just be a little bit further in here. You just take that extra little portion off right there. Now notice the difference between the two. This is your real rump. You can tell by the fist shape like I mentioned earlier. This is your second rump. Looks a little different. It shows a little bit of the knuckle motion, but not much. In the end, you've got three steaks and a rump, and this scrap for some people on the end. Hope you enjoy my first tour.